Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about printed circuit boards or PCB. So let's dive right into it. Well, first, what exactly we are talking about? We are talking about backbone of every electronics. Basically, take the nearest electronic you and I can guarantee it that it has PCB. I don't even have to risk anything. I can risk a billion dollar in it and I will win. That's how important this puppy is. Another aspect, it, it also acts as a fundamental physical foundation of it. I do not mean in terms of electricity. While it does that, it also allows a physical place to put everything else. Basically, if you see your mobile phone, it has a case. What's inside that case? Like as in like uh, you have LCD and you you, uh, or LCD or OLED, you have a back. What's in it? It's PCB. Everything physically mounts to PCB. Your system on chip, PCB. Your memory, PCB. Your plugs and ports where you can mount your LCD, uh, your uh, other uh, ra radio antennas, things of that nature. Everything goes on top of PCB. So PCB is not only there electrically, it's also there physically. As in like, it's like, it's also acting as a structure. That's the whole point. That's why it's so important. It's like, it's taking the electrical load while also take, carrying the physical load too. So it's doing two in one. Now the core component of a PCB is rather simple. It has fiberglass, which has some epoxy in it, and copper. The end. It's surprisingly simple. It's like it's kind of interesting that we humans took so long to understand that how important this puppy is, and that's the whole, uh, whole point of it. Now generally there are a lot of holes drilled into it for multiple reasons. Many times you could have holes uh, drilled into it for mounting purpose, like because it's a physical structure, you may have to let's say mount it to a case or may have to mount it to another uh, grounding plane. You may want to do that or you may want to have uh, another drilled holes for uh, like through hole connection, basically connecting the back side to the front side or connecting uh, the layers that are in between because PCBs could be bonkersly complex. Like we start with a single side PCB, then you go to two sided PCB, then you'll realize like, you know, motherboard can easily go to four side PCBs or um, one of my friend worked in like a old air uh, basically avionics of aircraft 18 layer PCBs and some people have specified that there are PCBs that go upwards of 50 freaking layer so there's a lot of importance of all even normal basic uh, mobile phone uh, system that we have they easily reach five to six layer easily so that's why holes are also very important for PCB now what's the logic behind it? So basically it is uh, doing the electrical work by replacing all the cable. Now before PCB, if you had to repair any electronics, good luck. Now if you want to understand how the heck it looked like, it basically looked like a type uh, electronic prototype. That's how electronics used to look. Basically this was the final state. This was not prototype. This was the final state. That's how your product used to look. If you open your old uh, as in like 1970s or 1980s electronics, not 1980 but 1970 I can guarantee you that it will look like this, like a jumble of wire. So that was the whole point. So what we have here is basically you have elements, uh, which is like your capacitor, your resistor, your inductors, your ICs, your elements, and those are connected via cables. Now you want to replace these things. How do you do that? You basically uh, use copper on the PCB side as a physical cable. That's how, how it's behaving that it's like, okay, this trace is going to do the job of connecting those two things and the fiberglass is going to do the job of physically allowing basically capacitor and resistor to stay somewhere so that's the whole point and insulation how the heck you're going to do because again it's exposed copper how the heck you're going to insulate that puppy you're going to insulate that on two core important point important point number one the pcb is like this and copper is laid on top of it so it's not flopping around it's not exposed to anything it's like it knows like it's here unless you have something else shorting it out is safe there and then you uh, basically mill out basically remove a channel around it where it's like no copper shall not be like on this side or this side this becomes an insulated area fundamentally a cable so that's how you achieve it and depending on how high voltage you want to do you will increase the gap and you will make sure there is no other uh, things which can short by so that's how we get the electrical part and fiber acts as a backbone for everything else and holes are interconnection for mounts and like basically if you want have to mount heat sinks through hole components there are many things that you have to do so holes are important for pcb and what does it allow like once you go through all the hassle of designing a pcb what's the point of it clean installation like pcb clean done like you look at it you're like okay i know what is wrong with this system oh i know how to repair it or how to upgrade it you you know you get the job done the end and one of the greatest advantage of human society is that this allows mass production like everything you see today the sole reason is possible i can guarantee that that's because pcb 
that's it like that's how important this this is like almost on the same level as electricity because before this every electronic that you see was handmade and that's why it could not have been mass produced no matter how uh, like you know necessary that equipment is it does not matter if it's a uh, ultrasound equipment it would have required like you know a team of uh, highly skilled people uh, working their ass off and they would have worked like around a month and barely got one ultrasound machine now it is we don't even count how many we make so and that's the whole point. It made mass production of every electronic device possible. That's why if we don't think uh, electronics are too complicated nowadays, simply because, yeah, just mass produce it. Just who cares? Who cares? Like your car now has more electronics than uh, Saturn program, but it's simple. Simply because mass production became possible. And basically because of mass production, more uh, competition ever. More competition, more technology got involved. Uh, more technology involved, more competition happened, more uh, innovation happened, more uh, awesome things happened. It created a feedback loop where now our pockets carry a laptop grade equipment. So how do you manufacture it? Now be mindful, this is a big industry and a lot of people pour a lot of money into this. So how do they actually do it? There is a lot of secret sauce element. However, core level is exactly the same. It's just like how they're doing it. They're, they're like, you know, uh, tricky sauce. Like how the heck, you can make french fries at home, but McDonald's makes it better. How the heck that happens? Like, you know, special sauce. So you you will start with a design. Now in old days, we started with a, like actual hand drawing, uh, but nowadays we start with what we call Gerber file. Uh, that's your design. Like this is what we want to do. now. Why Gerber file? Gerber file, think of it this way, it's like a JPEG of that industry. It's like standardized, every manufacturer can, if you give them like, this is my Gerber file, make a PCB, they're like, I got you fam. You can make it in other formats also, but they're like, yeah, we don't really, like, you know, it, the, that format is specifically made for that. So that's why Gerber files are something common you will hear. And then you have to understand, this is a negative process, basically subtractive, basically same way a PC, uh, basically you have CNC, take some block of aluminum and then mills things out. This is exactly the same thing. You start with a fiberglass which has copper coated to it. Now that copper coating is 100%. Basically this, if let's say this is your PCB block, this whole place is covered with copper. What you're gonna do is remove where you don't want it. That's the whole point. This is a subtractive process, not a additive process, not a 3D printer. You're not laying down copper. This is very critical because if you try to do that, it won't have the bonding strength and then it will simply come off. So, and not to mention it's very difficult. It's like, it's much uh, better to do like, you know, glue a uh, whole complete copper sheet than to like, and actually laying it down. So fundamentally, that's how we start. We basically have a copper sheet on top of a fiberglass, which is properly mounted. Both are acting as a single unit and then you remove copper. How do you remove it? Now, generally we start with two things. We print it, that's why printed circuit board. Now you print a mask. How do you print that mask? Depends on you. Some places uh, people have a metal mask, some places have a laser that is doing that, some places have, like you can have a physical uh, transparent sheet which will have a uh, ink placed on it, depends on that. Like how you do that, that's up to you, but you create a mask. Now that mask allows you to create something very interesting because you want to remove copper, uh, you utilize chemistry, you utilize what you call etching, basically erode it away, Co uh, corrode it away, basically mix it with something else. So how do you protect the part where that's where the masking comes in. Basically you are like, okay, copper on this area, you disappear. I'll put you in acid bath as you're gonna eat it away. So how do you protect this? This is the interesting part. This is the part where PCB gets their name. You have to mask this part. So how do you do that? That's the trade secret. That's the part, how they achieve that. It's generally there is a, a photoreactive element that allows that part to be bonded basically there will be element that will be bonded to the copper and it's gonna protect against adjutant that's the whole point so basically when adjutant is doing its job it's not gonna interact with the shielded part once it's done you wanna wash it off that's it that's all you have to do and at this point in time you technically have the base of a pcb and then you can go uh, basically make holes that's it like at this point in time this is a pcb and this is what you see in very old uh, early pcb electronics basically there is just a board and there is a lot of traces because in old days people used to stop at this point and then we realized well this is good it does work we want to reinforce this puppy so then we utilize what we call solder mask because you want to solder things on top of it you want to make sure solder does not stick to things where it should not now specifically example of a ball grid array now you can see that these balls are way too close to each other and if you try to solder it it's gonna just bridge every connection so how do you protect it you apply this green color that you see that's from solder mask uh, in some scenarios you can find uh, solder masks that are black some are red you get the point so solder mask is like solders are not stick to me that's why it's classified as solder mask it's gonna occlude solders now you're gonna leave it places again you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna mask it and uh, apply it mask it apply it that's all there is to pcbs that's why pcbs can be mass produced like it's almost like a printing press of old days uh making that mask is the expensive part once you make the mask everything else is just a chemical process so you apply your uh 
basically solder mask solder will not stick to the green areas even if you drop it it will simply not stick there and then you're gonna have places that are exposed it's like you shall solder to here you shall solder here you shall solder here so in those places you're gonna do one extra step that is what we call tinning now tinning is the amazing part at this point in time that allows solder to stick to it now I'm like we made this part that does not stick we made this part that does stick what does that mean that simply means even a machine can do your soldering job. At this point in time, you can apply solder paste and bake it. It will go exactly where it's supposed to go because one place is rejecting it and the place you want to accept it is accepting it. That These two things, the tinning part and the solder mask part, they make sure the solder only goes where it's supposed to go. And that's how machines can mass produce motherboards uh, so quickly. So that's the whole point of it. And after that, like now physically, electrically, this puppy is done, this can be sent to a robot. Robot is like, I got this, I can make this into a complete product. But generally, because humans are involved, we also do what we call silk screening after that. Basically, we're gonna print this puppy. Now, depending on your requirement, you will have a serial number printed there. You're gonna be like, this was manufactured here, uh, this code, or like, you know, this is the IC number this, uh, register value this. That's up to you. Or you, if you are Elon Musk, like this car was made in hum uh, on Earth by humans. That was like the car had that PCB etching there. So that's the manufacturing aspect. Basically, you take fiber uh, glass that already has a sheet structure to it, already have copper bonded to it. You remove the copper to make out traces. Then you protect them with solder mask. Then you expose parts where you want the soldering to happen. You tin those parts. You do drill drilling operations. And after that, uh, you do silk, silk screen. So it has all the markings, serial numbers and all that jazz. And then your PCB is done. How do you achieve that? That's up to you. I have to write a detailed video down below. But this is what they are doing. How they do it depends different from factory to factory. Now, because this is a complex thing and because this is so precious to our everything, there are rules for it. Now, rules are like this. Think of it this way. Same way we have rules for USB. That's how you can make sure that a pen drive that you buy from any manufacturer works with any other manufacturer because there are rules for it. Same happens here. Now, because you are dealing with voltage and ampere, there is some physical loss here. For example, gap of the trace like how far each traces can be uh, that directly depends on how high for the voltage these puppies are basically your motherboard traces can be very close why because generally they will not exceed uh, 12 volts now technically if you have 12 positive 12 negative you are talking about 24 volt potential difference that's not a much uh, what that much voltage is not gonna jump around but let's say you are talking about a in inverter that is for home voltage that is let's say 220 volt now you have to make sure that pcb does not just like you know voltage does not get emotional and just go yolo so you have to make sure the gap is sufficient for that and if you are talking about let's say three phase inverter you have to take some serious care otherwise your voltage will have like you know arcing will happen in the pcb itself so again okay, these are a rule you have to follow it it's not optional you have to follow it another aspect is thickness basically how uh, thick the copper sheeting that was applied was that because depending on your power requirement basically how many amperes you are dealing with you would have a sheeting that is like you know very few ounces to like you know few kilograms like you will like why the heck you need something that heavy well think about it this way let's say you are talking about a tesla motor uh tesla roadster car those inverter circuit that's handling 100 amperes or more uh, every second at that point in time if you have these tiny traces yeah it's gonna disappear so fundamentally you can pay attention to it you can pay attention to even a motherboard and you're like hey these tiny traces yeah it's not carrying too much ampere you see the power delivery side that would be like huge and that's how you know how much ampere these puppies are handling basically if the fat ones they're designed for handling huge amperes and there is a rules for that it's like okay uh, for this this much and then you will notice something very interesting that there is no 90 degree turn in PCB. Is there law of physics? Yes and no. Uh, yes is basically there because if you have a sharp 90 degree turn and you are sending pulse signal to it, you may end up in a scenario where you're creating radio interference. Another aspect is etching process is not a very uh, clean process. So in 90 degrees generally there used to be very high risk of uh, what we call failure. Basically that corner will not develop properly. So 45 degree was um, agreed upon where it's like this is good enough where we can get Guarantee. every manufacturer can guarantee this our adjutant can uh, develop this without destroying this puppy because always like you you want your adjutant to be strong enough to remove all the copper and you are removing more copper than you are uh, letting on so your adjutant has to be strong and but again if it's too strong it destroys something so there has to be a balance so 45 degree was selected it's like 90 degree is just too risky it's not impossible it's just risky and especially if you have a motherboard and let's say every fourth board you are making is failing because of that you will be like hey just just stick to 45 so in the industry there is this standard again depending on requirement you can change it like 90 degree you can have in some scenarios but most of the time 90 degrees people are like that shall not use 90 degrees now uh 
another aspect that you will notice is the swiggly line. Why the heck there is swiggly lines in this puppy? That's what we call trace matching. Basically, think of this way. You have your processor and you have a PCI lane. Now this 16, let's say, let's just go with that. Let's say you have 16 lines coming from your uh, CPU to this PCI slot. Again, the engineer will decide, okay, find the longest truck. It's like, okay, this is the longest path. Then it will collect the data of it. Let's say resistance. Let's say resistance is 10. Now, it's the shortest path would be only eight in terms of resistance. That's not acceptable. That means the signal will, especially in high speed signal where you have megahertz, gigahertz, or even higher than that, that is just a no-go because your one signal will reach before the other signal. So they're gonna make sure the short paths go the swiggly route to gain the length. Basically, they will make sure each trace from point A to point B is physically uh, 10 ohms depending on the requirements they will be like okay uh, if the longest one is 10 ohms make sure everything else is also 10 so that's what we call trace matching and you will pay attention to it you will find hey why the heck they are going the long route that's it and all these rules like the rules i'm described here that's basic bitch rules that's like you know if you're just thinking about making pcb in your own home that that's what you will think about like there are laws much more complicated for example uh, especially for high power uh, let's say battery management circuits because battery management is becoming important there are quote unquote guidelines that people utilize thick ground planes in like multi-layer pcb thick ground planes are used and those are acting as a heat sink that is distributing the uh, heat sink uh, basically heat throughout the board so each component heats uniformly because you could have a scenario where one component heats a tunnel that parts of the physical pcb bows up and destroys everything else it's like it will physically pop other things because solder mask while uh, solder itself is strong connection it's not physical connection it's not like you know two nut bolts going yeah we're not never gonna move it's like if you heat it up and you like put little bit of strain on it you can pop it out so people realize like you have to have a ground plane which is acting as a heat sink also again not necessary but it's like quote unquote good rules so there are rule sets that are made specifically for pcb industry that is followed by every manufacturer so manufacturer is simply not going to ask you like hey uh, whether we can make it or not they assume if you follow the rules from ipc triple two one we can make it that's the whole point of it it's like if you follow the rules properly it should work it's like how usb pen drive works it's the same thing and there are many more rules like uh, if you go into this uh, documentation ipc triple two one it goes deep basically very very deep so these rules are the reason why you can basically give your Gerber file to uh, JSL PCB, PCB Superway or whatever company you want to choose and all of them can manufacture it. Because if you follow your PCBs properly and design software, most of them nowadays have those default, it will be manufacturable and it will be stable. Now what about do it yourself? Well, first you have to start with design. Can you do this uh, pen and paper? Yes, but you have to be very good and not to mention it's very tedious. So let's start with PCB softwares. Thankfully, there are a lot of free option. For example, KeyCAD, uh, DesignSpark PCB, Fertilizer, and there are a lot of options. Just type free PCB software, you, you'll get a lot of them. A lot of good option. You can make some good complicated stuff with these things. They don't have like weird limitations. And then you come to printing the mask part. Generally, you type PCB making at home, the first thing people will say, just take a laser printer, print it on a basically toner on a transparent sheet of any type and just iron that copy into uh, board itself. Does this work? Yes, it's tedious. You have to do multiple times to figure out like how, uh, how to bond the toner to the copper. So the toner protects uh, during the etching process. That's the whole point. If you get this part done, everything else is super easy. If you fail at this part, you can keep doing it again and again. Now be mindful, we are talking about liquid etchant and while technically it's safe component, it's still a serious chemical. You have to know what you're doing with this. And if you're unsure, unsafe, uncertain, do not touch this. This is serious stuff. Do not YOLO around this. So that's the one thing. Now, for many people, chemicals are a no-go option because again, uh, India's are very lax on the chemical regulations, but there are certain places where like dude, getting this chemical is so tedious, not by the cost, simply because you have to have this license or that license. You're like, just give me something simple allow cnc machine now these cnc machines are kind of ludicrously expensive for how small they are I'm like they're this small but they are very precisely built for one thing i'm gonna mill pcb i'm not gonna like you know mill aluminium or things of that nature i'm just designed to make pcb and they're very good at that i provided a video down below and you will be like damn and if you know what you're doing you can easily make three or four layer pcbs so Many people go the PCB route option, uh, CNC route option. Many people go the chemical route option. That's up to you, uh, whatever floats your boat. And uh, nowadays, a new option has emerged, uh, the option of online batch production. Now, batch, when I'm talking about, I do not mean 10,000 pieces or no. Because in the old days, if you said to any P PCB manufacturer, we want to order 10 pieces, they're like, that's the door, disappear. 
that's the whole point unless like nasa will have its own dedicated branch that only makes one or two pcbs you and even nasa goes to them like yeah disappear we we're not going to even try to manufacture if it's only let's say 100 pieces now however with uh, modern development of masking technology uh, printer technologies and things of that nature which allows us to manufacture masks properly uh, we can do what we call batch production on small scale basically 10 pieces four pieces technically you can even order one piece nowadays uh, so you will see P pcb manufacturing from jl pcb for two dollars like 10 piece for two dollars 10 prototype and the reason why they have like 10 is like they have to cut down a big sheet and once they cut it down it's useless they have to throw it away or use it so generally they choose the option of hey just use it because again anybody is ordering this they are in prototyping stage so having multiple pieces is a good option because let's say you messed up the soldering part in one is like okay i have second board try it again or uh, like you know you uh, make multiple options and then you distribute amongst your uh, engineering department let's say you built a inverter for your uh, next big tesla car and it's like okay you want to give multiple options to multiple engineers hey do actual stress testing one you can carry around the same product or give multiple boards to each other so this is a really good option you have J uh, jlc pcb you have pcbpower.com which i've been told that is directly indian and there are many 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 more options so you are in good hands at this point in time however be mindful they are still kind of expensive uh, and uh, time is the main aspect like for many college uh, basically electrical college they will go with the etching rod because it's time efficient basically print the system you can start your pcb design once you're done like as in like okay this is the pcb i have to make it you will have finished pcb as early as like six hours uh, this system will take six days at best case scenario uh, cnc mill is also quicker it's like around eight to ten hours but uh, no chemicals are used so you have lot of do it yourself option now do be very mindful i'm stressing this again these chemicals are serious thing do not just go yolo it you can buy it from amazon but don't yolo it if you're not sure about this so this was my presentation about pcb i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching